Since Smarty recently introduced 5G coverage on their plans, we've wanted to take advantage of it. But with the cheapest 5G capable modems starting at £300 and up to more than £1,000, I just couldn't justify getting one in addition to our current 4G router. But keep watching to see how we've been able to enjoy 5G spending less than £150. Don't forget to check out our other videos on everything campervan and motorhome related, from solar to water, heating to gadgets, tyres to trips. If you like this video, please do hit the thumbs up. It really does help me to know what you like, and you can ask any questions or give feedback in the comments. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of our future videos, please hit the subscribe button and clicking the bell will give you a notification when a new video goes live. Finally, if you do decide to hit the thumbs down, it would be great if you could also leave a comment so I'd know what you didn't like. As you've probably heard me say before, we use Smarty's unlimited plan in the van. At £20 a month, we find it great value, but it recently became even better as Smarty added 5G access for no extra cost. If you are interested in any of Sparty's plans, you can currently get 60 gigabytes for just £10 a month, 200 gigabytes for £15 a month, and fully unlimited for £20 a month, all with no contract ties or throttling. And if you use our link in the video notes, you can get your second month for absolutely free. We've been happy with Smarty's 4G performance, and we know that in a lot of areas we stay, we're unlikely to have 5G coverage, as it is generally limited to cities and large towns. But we do sometimes spend time in areas that do have 5G. It seemed a shame not to be able to use it when it was already included in our plan, and would give us much faster download speeds. So I went on the hunt to see how we could use 5G without spending a fortune. Unfortunately, MiFi's and routers that are 5G capable are over £300 for a basic model, nearly £800 for more advanced, and more than £1,500 for the industrial routers we're used to using on 4G. So for the very occasional times we would be able to use it in a 5G area, they were a bit too much. So I changed tack and thought back to how we had used a phone hotspot when we first started travelling in our van. After a little bit of searching, I found the Poco M3 Pro, which is a no-frills Android smartphone which importantly is 5G capable and has the ability to create a hotspot. The obvious compromise to more expensive 5G MiFi or routers is it doesn't have external antenna connections, but given that the range of 5G is pretty limited anyway, for the difference in price, I was happy to try it out and I do have a plan to help, which I'll talk about later. Do be careful if you go hunting for 5G phones on online marketplaces. I found a ton of fake clone phones on AliExpress that claim to be 5G from as little as £36, including this PP M3 Pro, which is clearly an attempt to copy the Poco M3 Pro. But on researching, not only is it clearly a fake, it's not actually 5G, and even though it says on the front screen it is, but it's a terrible phone with a tiny amount of storage, running a very early version of Android and really is only fit for the bin. Anyway, back now to the genuine Poco M3 Pro 5G, which is an established phone with plenty of independent reviews. I got mine from Banggood for just under £130 and it arrived within a week. You can find a link to it in the video notes. You can also get the M3 Pro from a UK supplier for a little bit more money. I've included Amazon links in the description as well. Now let's take a look at setting it up. Once you've initially set up the phone, you need to switch on the hotspot. In the setting menu, tap Portable Hotspot, and then Set Up Portable Hotspot. Here I'd suggest changing the name of the hotspot, and definitely change that password. Further down your screen you'll see Select AP Band. This is the frequency that the Wi-Fi will use. Unless you have some equipment that can only use 2.4 GHz, set this to 5 GHz to get the most out of the bandwidth that you're able to get from the cellular network. Then back on the main setting screen, you just need to switch on Portable Hotspot. 
There are a few settings you can choose to set. One time data limit lets you make it switch off the hotspot after a certain amount of data has been used. You can set it to switch off the hotspot when nothing is connected to it to say power. And you can see the connected devices and block them if you want to. So let's see how it performs. Here we've got two identical iPhone 6s. This one connected to the hotspot on our Poco M3 Pro, which as we can see is connected to Smarties 5G network and has three bars of 5G signal. This one is connected to our Teltonica RUT955 4G router, which you can see the review of here or in the link in the video notes. This is connected to Smarties 4G network, also with three bars of signal strength. We can see we are using the same speed test server. Let's run the speed test and see the difference in performance. So we can see the 5G connection is roughly 10 times faster on download and four times faster at upload. We'll do one more test on a different server. Which also shows that 5G has 10 times faster download speed, but only marginally faster upload speed. So let's have a think about those results. Both the 4G and 5G network have given plenty of bandwidth for most tasks in this location. But you can't argue that with about 10 times higher download and better upload speeds, the 5G connection is clearly superior. However, if you are thinking the 5G POCO hotspot is going to replace our Teltonica router, well, no, it won't. For many reasons, the main ones being there are many areas where 5G just isn't available and the more sensitive modem and external antennas on the RUT955 give us much more chance of getting a data signal, either 4 or even 3G in the types of place we usually stay. The router also gives us lots more configuration to prioritise the bandwidth to certain devices and manage the access point that you just don't get on a phone hotspot. But if you do spend time near to cities or large towns, if that extra speed will be useful to you, and as the 5G network expands, then for less than £150, I think this is the cheapest way to be able to use that inclusive 5G service if it's included in your plan. We've done a few tricks and hacks to make using the phone hotspot even better for us, so let's take a quick look at those. Thinking back to that drawback of not having external antennas connected, long-term viewers will probably remember that before we went down the route of a more substantial mobile internet solution, we used a simple MiFi unit in a waterproof box. Well, in the spirit of recycling, here is that waterproof box. This allows us to pop the phone safely on the roof to improve the 5G signal. The piece of string is our reminder to take it down before driving off. To make it more functional as a hotspot, I'm using a simple free app called MacroDroid. I've configured it so that when the phone is switched on, it automatically activates the hotspot, saving me have to go into the settings to do it each time. It's also allowed me to add a quick green shortcut button on the home screen to start and stop the hotspot should I want to turn it on and off. And this shortcut from the Play Store allows me to jump straight to the hotspot settings without going through the settings menu. By using the wireless signal info app, also in the Play Store, I've added this widget to the home screen so I can easily see the connection type, strength and the data traffic. As when we're using it, we have it on permanent charge. This widget allows me to see the battery temperature and the process load along with the battery state. And as battery health is impacted by temperature, I've also configured MacroDroid to send me a text message if the battery temperature goes over 45 degrees. So far it hasn't, and we've been using it a lot while we've been testing it.
and when the phone is in the box on the roof, as we occasionally get service and offer messages by SMS from Smarty, I've set a rule for MacroJoy to forward those to my phone so I can read them easily. And finally, just in case the data connection or Wi-Fi get locked up while it's on the roof, or I just want to reset the unit when we're away from the van, I have it set so that if I text it with the word reboot, it will reset the cellular connection and the hotspot and then send me back a text message saying rebooted. A minor drawback is that with most MiFi ins and routers you have the ability to view the status and configure them for the device you have connected. So if you have a MiFi outside you can still look at what the signal strength is or what devices are connected and reboot the device. To be able to do that to some degree I've put Team Viewer Quick Connect on the Poco M3 Pro which allows me to access and control it from my phone. Which just happens to be an iPhone but you can also do it from another Android phone. We're using the M3 Pro simply as a hotspot, but obviously if you wanted to, you could use it as a phone. And I've been using it a little bit, and it's pretty good. With all the usual functionality and apps available for Android 11 in the Play Store. Remember, it will also connect on 4G and 3G networks, so if you are looking for a really simple way to get mobile internet, it's worth considering. So overall, this is going to be a great addition to our mobile internet setup, giving us the chance to get some amazing 5G speeds. Thanks for watching our video, and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share, and consider subscribing.